Now, in a previous video, we talked about how we can create and break down epics inside of our product roadmap board um, down to our R&D team board. Um, so we have two R&D teams from Jane and from OEA. And then we're going to focus on the Jane uh, structure. It's the same every time. And then you can add a scrum team directly from over here. This will essentially create this bundle of boards uh, and you can rename it according to the team that you want. So you can manage multiple R&D teams uh, in one place. Uh, obviously, you don't have to, uh, but this is something that we allow you to do directly and adding it directly from over here. Um, so a few items or a few user stories were created by the product team inside of our uh, stories board. And then Jane as a team lead can come in and then start assigning them to the different queues. Obviously, this is going to be aligned with the product team, but then we're focusing on Q3 right now. And this was just created for us. Another user story. I'm going to just do this really quickly. Um, and then we have a few user stories that were created together with the product manager. Um, we can then capture different types of information again, right? So the priority, what's the status of the epic that we're supporting? Um, if this if this is selected for this queue or the next queue, this is going to help us with automations. Um, we have connection to the sprint management board. So this is the board that we see directly over here. So these two boards are connected together with the sprints metadata, and this allows us to create tasks from those user stories, break them down into tasks, and then assign them to the, uh, to the dedicated developers and manage them directly in sprints. So let's see how that can be done. Now, as a team lead, I have visibility into whatever that is going on inside of my stories board. This is a bit not as granular as I would like it to be. So I might want to break it down into tasks. So in order to do that, I can then come in here. Just like we saw in the previous uh, hierarchy, I have visibility and I have uh, the task, the epic description or the story description. I can display information regarding this, the, the user story. And then I can see the linked tasks. Now, those tasks live within the sprint management board, board. So I can start creating tasks directly from over here. This is one way to do it. But then another way to do it is to go into the sprint management board. And this is something that we might uh, do on a day-to-day -day basis. This is where we're going to have our daily standups. Uh, this is gonna, where we're going to be managing our different sprints uh, and create the tasks that are going to be supporting those user stories. And then going upwards, it's going to support the epics and the queue goals. So inside of the sprint management board, <clears throat> uh, what we're using is a connection between the sprint management and the sprint metadata. So that means that directly from over here, I can create a new sprint. I can rename it to be, for example, sprint four. I can decide what are going to be the, um, the timeline for this uh, for this sprint. I can specify sprint goals. One. So one create a new sprint and this will do two things first of all it's going to create a new group for me directly over here on this board which is going to be called sprint 4 and then it's going to create a dedicated item which is called sprint 4 together with all the other items that already exist so all the sprints together with the backlog on the sprint metadata board so the sprint 4 was just created together with the sprint goals and all these are already created um, when i first logged in I can see which sprint is active, which ones are completed. And again, obviously the backlog isn't relevant. And then this is just for us to keep some track of what's going on behind the scenes. Uh, but what we're actually using is the sprint management board itself. So directly from over here, I can complete a sprint. I can see which sprint is active, what's the timeline for it. I can then completely complete it. I'll be notified that it happened, perfect. And then I can start my new sprint directly from over here. Just to give you some visibility in what's going on behind the scenes, this is now active. This is completed. Sprint number three. If we go back to sprint metadata, we can see that sprint number three is now completed and not active anymore. And sprint four is active right now. Um, when you go back to our sprint management board, we'll be able to see that we're capturing different types of information again, right? So we have the item, the task name. 
we have the specific owner or the developer for it, uh, we see what's the status for it, right? So whether it is ready to start, done, these can be labels that you can create for your own. If this is pending deploy, next sprint, is it stuck and so on and so forth. What domain is this coming from? If this is relevant, you can estimate effort. So it doesn't have to be story points. Obviously this can be all, this can also be hours very easily. So it doesn't have to be story points necessarily. So you can uh, capture the estimated story points versus the actual story points. So you can see in a second on a dashboard, um, if you are on track, if you are missing your estimations and so on. Priority, obviously dependencies, as we talked about them, what is the linked story? So the stories, again, they live in a different board. And we're connecting those boards, allowing us to support pulling and pushing information from one board into the other. So we can see which story we're supporting using this uh, specific task. What type of task is this? Is this a bug, feature, a quality one, a test one, and so on and so forth. We can also capture if this is a design task, if this is a QA task, so it doesn't have to be developer's tasks. Uh, what, what's the due date when, well, when maybe if we're working in sprints, this night might not be relevant, so we can completely remove it if we want. If this was unplanned, right? So sometimes we're getting new requests for our specific sprint that might not be planned. So we can add them directly over here. They'll be connected to the sprint itself. And then we can mark them as unplanned. So we can also keep track of how many unplanned stories and tasks we have during the sprint and see if we need to push back on a few and what's the capacity for unplanned tasks uh, for the future. Um, yeah, so this is one way to visualize all these. Another way would be, and I'm gonna quickly remove um, this new sprint to be able to see um, some of the information that we have used in the dashboards. So we have our current sprint, which is active. It's currently running. Uh, we want to have a daily stand up to see the tasks that are maybe not done yet, right? So we've created a bunch of different views. So we have a dedicated view for daily stand up. This is something that is going to be aggregating all the relevant active sprint tasks and show them with a short legend telling you how are you doing uh, versus how you would like to be during the sprint. So we're almost 30% done. We have some tasks that are stuck. If I want to see exactly which one they are, all I have to do is click into it. I have a complete list into the tasks that are in a stuck status. And then I can communicate with the owner, ask them what's going on, if they need any help. Or maybe if this is on a stand up, they say, no, I'm good, I'm done. I can change this to be done directly from over here and it will be updated as well. Um, we can also capture what are the planned story points for or any type of effort for this sprint, how many unplanned story points we have and how many are done already. We can also see the uncompleted tasks. So this is again, the same view just filtered not to show us all the, all the tasks that are in a done status. So we can open this up in the morning, go over this with the team, see who the owner is, what's the status, what do they need more? If there's anything to change over here, we can change it directly over here. If we want to have visibility into what's going on in the task itself, we'll see how we can click into this one and see everything that is going on together with any code changes that happened on GitHub as well. Um, other types of views is the active sprints board and view that allows us to see only the active sprint without all the other noise of backlog and other sprints that may have ended. A sprint dashboard is another view and this is a board dashboard. We'll see in a second, in a few minutes, how we can aggregate information from multiple boards. This one relates only to the board that we live right in right now. So we can see the capacity versus how many tasks are assigned to them, right? So the different teams, maybe we have a senior developer or a junior developer, and we want to, not to assign them with the same amount of story points because they can handle different capacities. So we can have visibility into that during the sprint as well. How many planned story points we have on the sprint? What's the distribution between the priority of our tasks and the type of the tasks that we have? Uh, and we can see the upcoming sprint tasks. So maybe these can be uh, the tasks that are in the candidates or in the backlog or in the following sprint that we might already started to create. We can also have a dedicated view for uh, either the managers or the developers themselves only to show them the tasks that are assigned to them. So this is gonna be something that is gonna be dynamically filtered. So anytime anyone is going to go into a specific view, into this view, they're only going to see the tasks that are assigned to them and not anyone else's. This is going to be a dynamic field. 
If you guys are working in Kanban, we also have a Kanban view. Allows you to select a status color you want to uh, you want to display the columns by, and then we can see and move the tasks between the different uh, columns. You can also choose how much information you want to see in a specific card. So I can remove some information over here to clear some more room. And then this is dynamic. So if I'm going to drag stuff between those uh, those columns, it's going to update the status column on the item itself. Because essentially, again, what this does, it takes the same information that we saw in all these boards and displays them a bit differently. Um, OK, so the last point I want to talk about is two things, integration with GitHub and the Git UI. So in terms of integration with GitHub, we have a new integration that is open for both US accounts and EU accounts. So we have this open for Monday Dev users. This is the new GitHub integration. And an integration, as you probably know, is a connection between the Monday Dev, uh, the Monday platform, and any other third party platforms. In our case, GitHub. If I go into this, all I have to do is connect my account once as an admin on both GitHub and Monday side. And then we're able to create um, a communication between the two platforms. So I have recipes that say when something happens on the Monday side, I want to update something on the GitHub side or the other way around. When something happens on the GitHub side, I want to create something on the Monday side. So we have different types of recipes or are listed over here. You uh, feel free to check them out and play with them. Really allows you to change statuses based on something that happened on the GitHub side. Uh, whenever something is completed, you want to change a status, notify a specific person, create a whole dedicated workflow that is going to kick off QA, for example, or a testing uh, flow, anything and everything that allows you to really reduce the amount of manual work that you guys have and reduce the human error in the process. And the last thing I want to talk about is the Git UI. So obviously, most of you are working with any uh, code versioning systems. And then most of you are working with GitHub. So but even if you guys are working with GitLab, for example, this is coming up in the next few months. But then if you go into any of those items, just like we did before with those hierarchies that are connecting between the epics and the stories, the stories and the tasks, we can list a bunch of information inside of the item card. Obviously, I have some information related to the specific uh, task that lives over here. But then if I scroll down a little bit more, I can see that I have my Git UI widget. This allows me, if I want to edit using the Add Widget button over here, very easy to do using this, or as a dedicated view only for the Git UI using this plus icon over here, directly over here. If I go into the Git UI, you're able, you're able to see, I'm going to go back to the original one. I'm able to capture information of everything that has to do with this specific task. So we're connecting between the task and any branch that you have created locally and pushed to GitHub and any pull request that is connected to this branch. So I have visibility who, into who the author is, what repository this lives in, what's the name of the branch, um, how many commits did I have in this specific branch, when was the last update, and any pull request that was listed I'm um, able to go directly into it from over here into GitHub. Uh, same goes for pull requests, right? So I can see if this is a merged one waiting for review and so on and so forth. Who's the reviewer? So then I can create automation. So whenever someone is edited as a reviewer, I can then notify them on the top of the platform as an email, whatever that may be, Slack, Microsoft Teams, and so on. I have visibility into the labels. And then things that happen on the GitHub side will flow automatically and change on the Monday side over here. Uh, going down a little bit more, this is the same thing just in a summary view. So I can see how many pull requests I have for this item, uh, who are the stakeholders for this one, and then how much time does it take already. Um, so this is the Git UI, very, very popular and starting to get a lot of attention from our different customers. I really highly encourage you to check it out and see how much value it can add to your team. So this is, in a few minutes, covering sprint management and the connectivity between the story uh, the user stories, the sprint management board, and how we manage the back end on a metadata board. We have visibility into different types of uh, dashboards, allowing us to slice and dice information. And then the last thing I want to talk about 
before we move on to the next video is how we can aggregate information from two different developer teams, right? So we have Team Jane and Team Maria. In order to aggregate information from both of those teams, we, we've created a dashboard, which is a standalone dashboard that lives in, within here. If I go into here, we can see that I can capture and add up to 60 different boards, uh, depending on the tier, obviously. But then the boards that you are connecting are listed over here. You can decide how many boards you want to aggregate information from. Not all the widgets that we're going to see aggregate from all those boards. Obviously, you can decide based on the widget what information you want to pull from which board. You can obviously add boards at any time that you want. And then I can start adding widgets. So these are widgets that we can add from the store. These are the more popular ones. All the tires that you see over here is the widgets. And then we can customize them based on our will. So things that we can capture over here are information regarding the different sprints. And this can come from the Team Uriah and also Team Jane or any other team that you might want. We can see the progress in each sprint. So the current sprint, we can see how close we are to be done. If we have any bottlenecks, we're able to uh, address them. This is really good for team leads, for group leads, uh, anyone who wants visibility into what's going on. This is really great for product teams as well. Product managers can have visibility into the current sprint. If we're on time, we need to add some more uh, uh, tasks. We're not on time and we need to reduce some tasks and put them to the next sprint maybe. We can capture bugs and we're gonna touch on that in a second. Um, and see how much time does it take us to complete a task or to resolve a task. If we have any incidents trend, we can capture this here. And then obviously you can add as many widgets as you want. So using the settings, I can decide which boards I want to capture information from. So it doesn't have to be all of those boards in the same time. I can decide what's the chart type that I want to display, what's gonna be the X axis, the Y axis. So I have visibility into all of the items that lives with all the columns that lives in each board. Um, and other types of settings that I can add to each of those widgets. Really depends on the type of the widgets and the number of boards you're pulling information from. So I can see if uh, the estimated story points versus the actual story points ongoing on a sprint basis uh, allows me to plan better going forward. This is something that you can then export, share, print, uh, send notifications to different stakeholders to maybe come in once a week or once a day to see how are we doing in the sprint or any other type of work workflow that you're managing. Um, in the next video, I'm going to touch on the last points that I want to talk about. So these would be the bugs queue, retrospectives, and then we're going to wrap it up and uh, talk about how we can uh, streamline all that process using and add templates to that.